everybody, KJ here. It has been nothing but clouds for the past month and it has been brutal. But today, finally, the clouds have broken. I'm particularly excited today because this is technically going to be a first light with both the Orion Skyview Pro and the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. Um, for the past month, I have just been trying to work through bugs with my sit my setup. So pretty much every night that I've spent under the stars is just figuring out what's wrong with the setup and making sure all the different subsystems work. Um, but I think I'm finally at a point where I can pretty much polar line, get it set up, and start imaging. And I'm really excited because I've never imaged deep space with this telescope. Um, this is a 120 millimeter refractor, uh, which puts it at a thousand millimeters. So I'm really excited to see what kind of detail I can uh, resolve with this thing. Not only is it a first light for the Orion and the Skywatcher, but it's also a first light for my Canon T3i since I've modded it. I haven't been able to image Nebula, but I'm hoping that tonight I can just barely sneak by with getting maybe the tadpoles or the flaming star nebula just before it sets. So I'm really hoping I can take a look at that to see how my uh, modification went. I cannot wait for the sun to set. It's ridiculously clear right now. I got this mount almost a month ago and I still to this day have not been able to get uh, a true night of imaging with it. So a lot of firsts tonight and I'm really pumped. If you can't tell, cause I've said it eight times, but yeah. I hope you guys uh, enjoy standing in with me on this. quick tip for your polar alignment try to do it at dusk that way you can see your reticle a little better you don't even have to have an illuminator an illuminated reticle at that point because you can just see it through the sky glow so if you can try to do your polar alignment just after sunset So to start, I'm going to slew to Capella because it's a pretty bright star. I think it's the sixth brightest star in the night sky. And it's near the nebula that I'm trying to shoot here at the beginning of the night. See how this, um, how this astro modification for the T3i went. But first we got to get focused, make sure our tracking is good and everything. So we got some steps ahead of the process here. Hey guys, KJ here. It is 12.58 a.m. and I have been imaging on the Whirlpool Galaxy and um, I've really been working through a lot of kinks tonight. Uh, I couldn't get my dithering to work. I couldn't get my meridian flip to work. Um, it's just there's been a lot of issues but we're up and running. We're dithering. We did a meridian flip and I'm remote now uh, from inside. I'm in, I'm in the basement. You can see we're imaging the Whirlpool Galaxy. There's, let me do a little auto stretch here. See it's starting to show up there. Yeah, so this is astrophotography tool. You can see right now we're doing an exposure at this very moment. The telescope's out back right now. And we're also auto guiding. Here is the guide graph. See, uh, it's showing each of the little corrections it's sending to the mount as it's guiding a star. And right now we're at 0.83 total RMS, which is good. 
I'll take it. I'm doing multi-star guiding tonight for the first time, so that's cool. I'm just happy to be imaging. It's a full moon, but I'm excited to see what the dithering does. I've never done that, so yeah, hopefully we get something good tonight, and then I can show you guys, uh, share something with you guys. So stay tuned. As I process this image, I'm reminded of the cover of an incredible book. This is Burnham's Celestial Handbook by Robert Burnham Jr. An incredible three volume text written over the course of 12 years before the times of computers. The Celestial Handbook alphabetically lays out all constellations in the observable night sky and painstakingly catalogs every visible deep space object in it. Once referred to as the real life hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy, there is only one Celestial Handbook. As we turn the pages to the constellation Canes Venetici, we find our target, the Whirlpool Galaxy, Messier 51. Burnham writes, The discovery of the spiral pattern aroused much interest and was regarded by some 19th century students of cosmology as a confirmation of the nebular hypothesis. Thus, the spiral nebulae were at first thought to be new solar systems in the process of formation. And it was not until 1923 that the question was settled with finality. The spirals were now recognized as external galaxies, and the modern picture of the universe began to emerge. I'm honored to be able to observe and share these realities with you all. This is the deepest image of space I have taken to date, stretching 30 million light years across the universe. It's truly incredible what's possible when we set our mind to it. This has been KJ's Cosmos, and as always, don't forget to keep looking up.